Now I've been to some sad places, and I've seen way more than my fair share of squalor. But the conditions I saw in South Dakota in late July were truly appalling. I went to a place where half the population lives in poverty, and where suicide, drugs, and alcohol are so ingrained, the average life expectancy is 50 years old. That's the shortest life of any population in any country on earth. Right here, in America. All of us have heard something about how bad life is out on the res. But there's a big difference between what you hear about in the news and what's actually happening here. You might have an idea on what the conditions are like on the reservations, but you don't actually see them. So, I wanted to see them. And I wanted you to see them too. It was day 10 of my road trip through the Midwest. Up until this point, it had been a mostly happy journey. I began in Kansas City and traveled through a lot of eastern rural Nebraska and wound around into no man's land, South Dakota. I met lots of friendly people and there was a lot of optimism in the air. That's not what's happening here at the Rosebud Reservation. There's no optimism here. Only two other states have more square miles of reservations than South Dakota does. Here on the Rosebud Reservation, there's about 11,000 people, and most are descendants of the Sioux. This is the second biggest reservation in the state, and the second worst off. The Pine Ridge Reservation next door is actually far worse off than the place we're in now. And they're both way out in the middle of nowhere along the Nebraska state line. I think they were all put here on purpose. It's just about the biggest, most desolate stretch of land in the country. It's all back roads to even get to some signs of civilization here. This reservation's bigger than both Rhode Island and Delaware. Imagine how empty Delaware would feel. If there were only 11,000 people there. Now where we are now is the biggest city on the reservation, home to 1,400 people. It's considered the capital of the reservation because it's where the tribal headquarters is located. It's also where you'll find the worst of the conditions I had heard about. Alcoholism, Poverty, drug abuse, suicides, homelessness. Human trafficking is also a huge deal here. South Dakota ranks first in the country for human trafficking. But it's the addiction and the homelessness that are bringing this place to its knees. These people are fighting for their lives. And you probably haven't heard anything about it. This is how things look in Rosebud on the north end of town. These are all trailers. Many of these trailers are very old. Some have plumbing, most are damaged. If you have reliable power, you're lucky. If you have internet, you're a rarity. These trailers certainly aren't meant to hold 15 people in them, but they have to. And as bad as the conditions are, these trailer villages, they're at least shelter because a lot of people here don't have homes at all. 20 years ago, alcohol was the biggest problem on this reservation. Today, it's drugs and meth and fentanyl or the worst of it. Over here on the south end of town is where many of the homes are, or were. Because as you drive around these streets, you'll see boarded up houses all over. A lot of the people here have been cooking meth in their homes, and there's either an accident or the place gets ruined from all the chemicals in the air. Either way, turns out, once you make a bunch of meth inside your house, your home is uninhabitable. So one by one, one meth lab after another, they're losing their housing supply. This place already had a shortage of houses. Every time another house is taken out of the community, one more family is out on the streets. Some of them squish into trailer park land I showed you earlier. Some pack into other houses. The most unfortunate wind up on the streets with nowhere to go. Now I have a friend who worked for the tribal council here. She told me she quit the council because the tribal leaders, they're not doing anything to help the growing homeless problem, and they're turning their back on the drug crisis. She says the tribal council got five million bucks from the state to build more housing. She told me none of that money was used. 
Nobody knows exactly how many homeless people there are on this reservation, but everybody agrees the number's going up. I heard 40% of the people here don't have their own homes anymore. All over town now, you see dirty, drunk residents wandering around. Their own people look at them with disgust. The meth has taken hold here in a big way, I'll tell you that. There's gangs and drug cartels all over the place. But take away the drugs, and it's still bad here. The medical care is subpar, and the roads in town are often in disrepair. Clearly, there's no good work. When you drive around here, you'll see everything you expect to see. Dilapidated trailers, run-down storefronts, old cars. There's beggars and thieves, and lots and lots of drunks. There's stray dogs roaming around all over the place. There's hardly even a tree around. It's like a desert prairie land of the lost. Most people here live in poverty. Perhaps one in four lives somewhat of a normal life. The reservation lies entirely within Todd County, which is the second poorest county in the nation. Eight of the nation's ten poorest counties all happen to be Native American reservations. The other two are border counties in Texas. There were 10 million indigenous people here before European settlers came. Their numbers went down quite a lot after Europeans came because of war and disease. The ones that are left have faced centuries of persecution and discrimination. Almost all of them were forced onto reservations that lacked the resources needed to thrive. This particular reservation was established in 1889. Originally, the Lakota Sioux were given the whole western side of the state, but that land has been considerably reduced. You could call it stolen. Almost all the land here is held in trust, and the deeds are retained by the Bureau of Indian Affairs, which means the U.S. government. So a big part of the problem is these people don't actually own their own land. And you can forget about credit. They have none of that here. We're a nation that preaches individual liberty and private property rights, but when it comes to these people, a lot of those rights aren't realized. There's people that feel the way we've treated our native population is racist, as if they aren't capable of managing their own land. From the outside looking in, I think the Native Americans could only dream of being treated the way the black population says it's being treated. 10% of South Dakota's population is Native American. Look at this map. All the shaded areas are reservations. There are eight other reservations like this in this state. The worst of them is the Pine Ridge Reservation next door. Over there, nine out of ten people live in poverty, and most people bring in three or four hundred bucks a month. It's terrible. It's tragic. Native Americans are two percent of the U.S. population, and they are far and away our nation's poorest group. The suicide rate for American Indians is the highest of all, too. Only 3% of these people make it to age 65. My God. A lot of them drink themselves to death. It isn't uncommon to see them come into pharmacies and drink the rubbing alcohol right off the shelf. You can speculate why Native American populations like this struggle. They're often far less educated, so finding work is a tough task. I mean, look where we are. What would they do for work? Some reservations are like you'd have a casino in town. Rosebud does have a casino, but it's really small and run down. And let me tell you, their casino ain't saving anyone here. I don't know what the solution might be here. These people are so overwhelmed with immediate struggles, there's no look into the future. It's day to day here. Now I asked the governor's office about the missing five million bucks and asked if there was anything they actually track. I actually heard back from the state's Department of Tribal Relations, who told me, Tribes are sovereign entities, and any federal money they receive is theirs to spend as they see fit. I'd go ask the tribal council about what happened to the money. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. Thanks for no help, state of South Dakota. That $5 million is nothing compared to the federal package signed into law last year. The American Rescue Plan Act provided $31 billion in funding to help our native population. I don't think much of that's been used here yet. I don't know if any of it made its way down to this community. I wonder how much of that money was stolen by tribal leaders. There could be a really simple fix. 
Today's technology can print 3D houses for $10,000. They could solve their homeless problem with all that missing cash. Or they could just stop giving money to Ukraine and all the other countries around the world. We've given them billions and billions. Our own people, right here, they could use the money. But say you gave all these people here a home. Would that just enable the addicted here to continue being addicts? Would they just ruin the house they were provided? Because clearly, they need more than just housing here. They need counseling, job assistance, education. They need to learn how to live a normal life. They need to learn how to live their own lives and not be beholden to their traditions. Looking around this reservation, it's easy to see the ugly realities of life. And all in the middle of such a beautiful place. Hey everyone, so it's pretty clear by now that elected leaders aren't going to help you. If you don't like what you saw in this video, demanding change won't work. You're going to have to do it on your own. If you want to be safe and want your community to be a place where people want to live, you're going to have to clean the place up yourselves. You're going to have to work with your friends and neighbors to lower crime. Politicians clearly don't care as much anymore. It's up to us. This is Sage Nick's manager. This has been a Corner House Entertainment production.